Amanda, welcome to 88 Stitches. Yes, hello, thank you for having me. Good. Now, um, yep, that's it. Good. Keep that up. Nice, that's it, good job. Keep that up. Good, one more. Pick these up. me. <laughs> Now, Amanda and I, we met way back when playing okay. travel ball, which I know we'll get into yes, in just a little bit. How old were we? I was on my car right over. I was trying to think <laughs> how old we were. I, I think it was... 16? Yeah, it was right before like the Sweet 16 era, but I yeah. think it was heading into sophomore year. I think it was 16 U. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah. So... I think that's when we first met, which yeah, is so funny that travel softball oh yes. brought us together. A decade later, and we're here. I today. know, I know. A decade later, we're still here, yes, which is so exciting. <laughs> um, but Amanda has a unique perspective I uh, as a softball player, I which do. I want to dive into a lot in this episode. She decided to not go to college and play softball. Yeah. Um, she just went to college as a normal student, and I, I, I think that's awesome. Though, before we get into that, let's just talk about your early softball days. Okay. Only because like that helps us the scene for who you are as a player and things yeah. like that. So how did you start getting into softball? I, I think my dad was mentioning this to mm -hmm. you the other day, but yeah. I have an older sister. She love her dearly, not athletic. <laughs> she would ask me, one day asked me, how do you balance on cleats? And you don't balance, you just walk, like what that type of thing. So my dad growing up, I think just saw that I gravitated to whether it was like a basketball in the garage. I think I just loved sports and being outside. So I think my mom got something in the mail, like Massapequa Little League, and she put me in. And that, I really just started, I have pictures, which is so funny. Mm -hmm. We'll probably get to this that I ended up catching. I think they just put me in gear. <laughs> and it was old gear from their like garage or something. And I have photos of me at the elementary school in Massapequa. Oh. And I think she just put me into like, get me playing and going and I just loved it and we had literally from seven years old until I graduated. Love that so yeah. much. Well, we're gonna get those photos so I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. ask you for yeah. them. We'll put them on the screen for everyone. I that's can awesome. find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's great. Okay, yeah. so did you, it sounds like you kind of started catching from this from the jump of it. So it's funny you say, I think in Little League you just, they, you don't play positions, you just stand there. <laughs> and I think they just put me, in, I don't, in, we were, it was like t-ball. Like yeah. it wasn't even like we were pitching. I don't even know what I was doing. <laughs> um, but it's funny, we, I kind of was just thrown into catching during travel for mm -hmm. Team Long Island, we were so young. I think we were nine or 10 and the catcher at the time left for whatever mm -hmm. reason and we needed a catcher and they were like, Amanda, suit up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were like, do you want to try? And I think it kind of just came really naturally and mm -hmm. I think I just fell into it. I love that. And I could speak towards your natural abilities <laughs> because you caught when we played together yes, we as did. well. And um, I loved every single yeah. bit of watching you catch. I thought You're it was so, so awesome. Thank yeah, um, so I, I, I love that that you really stuck to it. And yeah, it, it kind of just fell right into it. I remember yeah. just getting my like first catcher's mm -hmm. legit glove because when they threw me in, I just had a regular glove and I was like, right. what is happening here? <laughs> um, but I really, yeah, I loved it and I kind of stuck with it. What do you think like made you stick with it? And not that you have to have an answer, but. A unique question. Yeah. I think you have a unique perspective. You're the only position on the field that can see literally everything. Mm -hmm. And you're involved in literally every play, mm -hmm. whether you're calling the pitches or you're, you're catching in your framing or you, mm -hmm. you, I think you have a lot of impactful plays and pitchers are so, so, so important. But I think catchers also mm -hmm. are like very much equal in being unsung heroes. And yeah. I think that was important to me. Yeah, it's funny you say unsung heroes. Yeah. I, I've talked, to, I think, with Kaz and Heather both about the oh. catchers being unsung heroes. Really? That's yeah. really interesting. No, that's so interesting. Yeah, so it's like, not. and I, I don't think you've watched those episodes. <laughs> I, don't think I, did <laughs> I think that's so funny. Yeah, they're, they're key moments that, you, you know, in the moment you don't think it's that important, then mm -hmm. you look back on the game and it's like, wow, that catch or that block or that. Really saved the yeah, game. Yeah, saved that game or that inning, which then turned out to be mm -hmm. the, the winning. Yep. For sure. Catchers can make or break any team yeah, defensively, 100%. which um, I, I will stand by. And also um, mindset, too. I think yeah. catchers play a big part mm -hmm. in just that dugout energy mm -hmm. or, you know, staying positive and stuff like that. Yeah, you kind of like can almost be like the glue of the team yeah, because of the, the position you're in. 100%. Love that. Okay, so... Did you always start at TLI when playing like from the travel ball perspective? And yeah. how did that come to be? Because that's a very high competitive ball. 100%. And it's funny, my dad always said, he was like, I could just tell that you're you, from a young age. And not that I'm super athletic, but I love just working out and stuff yeah. like that. I Truthfully, I ended up on TLI at 10U. And I think okay. that's such a young, I don't know how I ended up there in the best way possible. And I think it really was such an impactful 
part of my life, but mm-hmm. I think my dad knew a guy, and my dad always knows a guy. He's like, yeah, I know somebody. I don't know how, but he does. Um, and I think he just knew somebody. My dad loved baseball growing up. My grandma was like a Brooklyn Dodgers fan, turned into the Mets like through and through. So I think he just ran in that circle. Yeah. And he was like, oh, you played Mass Pico International. Do you want to come play and tr- go to tryouts? So little nine-year-old me <laughs> is at TLI tryouts. Yeah. Um, I had no technique. I knew literally the bare minimum. <laughs> I don't know how I was there. And I think they just saw that potential of like wanting to be there. And I, yeah. and I think that's how I ended up. Yeah. And so I ended up at TLI on the tenue team and I stuck with it through until I decided to stop. Before we started playing together, <laughs> are there any key moments in, in that time? Or any like key memories of yours? It's funny. Um, I do. Okay. I think it was about fourteen of you because ninth grade you're about what like thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, like second year, fourteen. Yeah. yeah. So Massapequa, Long Island, the the high school is a unique structure. The the grades are too big, so the ninth grade goes to a. Is it called like an annex or like um, a, separate, a satellite campus? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Attached to a separate area, and it was across yeah. town. And uh, that was my pivotal age. Mm. If I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. Do I like this? Do I, what's happening? And I was almost deciding not to play or maybe not play for school and the head coach coach Malone uh, he's still to this day very impactful in my life came drove from the main campus to the annex ninth grade campus um, I think it was ninth period English because <laughs> oh my god yes the high school main campus ended a few minutes earlier okay. so he drove over yeah. I was still in ninth grade and he knocked on the door and said I need Amanda Constantine oh, you're like me he, and I'm like little old yeah. me <laughs> like 13 like what yeah um Okay. And he was like, I heard that you were potentially not going to try out. And I was like, yeah, like not <laughs> mentally prepared for this conversation. Yeah. And I, I don't remember what he said, but I remember him basically encouraging me to go to tryouts. Mm. And then I ended up being a four-year starter on the varsity team. So that was an impactful, and also 14 years old, that's yeah. a main memory of mine. Yeah, that's that's so awesome. Yeah. Wow. I, like, I love hearing things like that. It's kind of like it was meant to be. Like he, yeah. he saw um, the faith almost in yeah. you or like reinstilled the faith into you. I yeah, like. I remember that being the turning point of me yeah. saying, yeah, maybe I will go try out. Maybe mm-hmm. I will go do that. And I owe so many of my life experiences mm-hmm. to that team too. Oh, that's so awesome. Let's continue on with the high school conversation yeah. though. So um, you spent all four years playing in, college, playing in high school. <laughs> yes. Sorry. You're good. And um, – uh, you were a starter, so yeah. where did you play? Like, how was your time? Was there, like, highs and lows you had to go through oh, in the high school level? Yeah, go for so, it. So, um, very interesting. I said that I was catching for a while, and I still yeah. – I did, and I definitely caught during games as well for the high school team. But um, Darby, who is one of my – still, I like, consider her a good friend of mine. Yeah. She also played for TLI and was mm-hmm. a competitive softball player, fantastic mm-hmm. softball player, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. All-American in high school. Yeah. She also caught also. Yeah. So, during the games that I didn't catch, they were like – First base, kind of very similar in the sense of blocking and Mm -hmm. different perspective, but still. So I ended up playing first, and that was my starting position. As as I grew older, like junior, senior, 100% first base. Yeah, I think that's a very fair... Transition. Yeah, transition yeah. parallel between the two positions because I tell my, my, my girls all the time, like, you have to act like a goaltender. And as yeah. a catcher, you do, but also as a first baseman, like, you have to anticipate the bad 100%. throws, block the balls in the dirt. Same yeah, like 100%. Catching. You had great glove work. I remember that. <laughs> so <laughs> I totally can see how you excel at that both you. areas on the field. Yeah, and it's definitely different. Don't get me wrong. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, what's going on here? And yeah. also, then taking grounders, and I love yeah. field work, is, I love field work, but mm-hmm. it's different than catching. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. I played first base for um, high school really. And I definitely had a lot of highs and lows learning a new position and also being so young. Mm -hmm. And I think the standard of you typically junior seniors playing on varsity and me being 13, nonetheless, not even wanting to try out originally. So I'm like, why am I here? Or like, do I deserve to be here? And like, and just, I think there's a lot of, and also just being in high school in general, there's a a lot of growth there. Mm -hmm. Um, As a person of who you are, whether that's like literally who you are outside yeah. Um, in the classroom or on the dirt. 100%. Yeah. I love that on the dirt. I haven't, yeah. I haven't said that in a long time. Um, so, yeah, I definitely went through a lot of highs and lows. I definitely also mm-hmm. went through that, too. Um, and I was in the same similar boat, you know, playing as a freshman and sophomore on varsity. Yeah. It could be daunting. Like, you're the, the youngest fresh meet on the team. Like, you have a lot of these girls that yeah. are, like, just bigger in size. Oh, my God, 100%. More developed in different stage of their high yeah. school life. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of – 14 to 18? crazy huge difference, huge difference. Yeah. no I know and like even just like socially like the girls 100%. like what they talk about on the buses I'm like oh wow okay yeah, I remember <laughs> it's funny so me Darby and then Kelly was uh the three of us started we were the same year yeah and we all were 
four year varsity starters. Yeah. So I think the three of us kind of stuck together. Mm -hmm. And actually it's funny. So when I got pulled up to varsity, there was a sophomore, Krista, yeah. truly one of my good friends to this day too. I consider her a very good friend. Mm -hmm. um, you know how you get a throwing partner? Yeah. She yeah. was my throwing partner. Uh, you were my throwing partner for yes, TLI. Yes, she was my like this. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be like, okay, go throw. And I'd be like, Krista. You ready for me? Yeah. yeah I'd be like, Hi. Um, and she, I think, also kind of took me under her wing as yeah. even though a year older, there's still differences. Of course, yeah. Um, but I remember, do you remember Renee? She was a pitcher um, for TLI. Why does that name ring, ring a bell? How old was she when, when we were freshmen? Um, maybe she, she she's a little oh bit. Um, my God. She was probably with Francesca's time. Probably. Yeah. Killer pitcher. Oh my yeah. God! I would I would be like batting and I'd be like. <laughs> I yeah, don't know yeah, what's yeah. Um, I would catch for her sometimes because oh. I caught sometimes. And even then, I'm like, oh my God, my technique at 14 is not where mm -hmm. a 17, 18 year old girl is. And she was fantastic. Yeah. Did that give you almost like not that you caught every game, obviously, but mm -hmm. like catching her as a freshman? Did that yeah. give you some confidence in you? Like, because I'm sure I would have been like, oh my God, she's a I, really good pitcher, and I have to catch her. I remember being yeah. anxious of being yeah. like, wow, she's so good, and I don't know if I'm going to uphold the standards that maybe an 18 year old catcher would or yeah. somebody of her level. And I think I definitely got better in technique or mm -hmm. better in my confidence catching somebody of that standard and rapport yeah at that age but I remember being anxious like oh my god what if I miss it what if she right. throws you know a bad drop and I miss that that block I yeah, yeah 100% what if um you were to like go back to Amanda at that oh, point yeah, in time yeah. and kind of say you know here are some tidbits of advice like or like keep on going like what would you tell your younger self in that moment yeah. I think just like breathe and mm -hmm. Louis just trust your instincts yeah. I think that's just the, like just being on the field, when you get mental, mm -hmm. when you think about it, or the hesitation, mm -hmm. that's what gets you. And I think 14-year-old me was like, oh, my God, in my head, just do it. Literally yeah. just have fun. Gut go instinct, out there, react. Trust your gut, react, yeah. go. Don't second guess it because that's what got I think that's what got me. Okay. Yeah. I think a lot of girls can resonate to that 100%. 100%. Okay, I love that. Okay, so high school softball, transformative time. We'll take a pause. I'm going to circle okay. back real quick to, to your last year because I think that's a very impactful year yeah. for you, especially if you didn't continue in college. But let's pivot a bit to travel ball. So okay. I think it was sophomore year that we both met. Which, yes. Um, I, I tried out for TLI at the time. Um, I came from Nitro playing under Coach Kaz, my dad, to then coming yeah. over to TLI. New team for me. Yeah. Didn't know anyone. I remember my first impression of you. I was like, oh, oh. I was like, no, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I was like, oh, I like her a lot. I was like, I kind of want to be friends. And we started throwing okay, together. So yeah, I don't know. You you were very welcoming compared to the oh. other girls on the team and um, being like, you know, a nobody. I'm yeah, no, that's definitely how I felt. And um, I think any girl going to a new team, it's very yeah. daunting. But um, I hung on to like the first few girls that were yeah. had the friendly smiles and said hi to me and like, you know, just didn't disregard yeah. me almost. It's, yeah. Oh my God, I would never. No. And I think we've, we, we spoke about that in different yeah. capacities. But it's funny you say that. I started at Tenu, yeah. which is where you start. So I think I – and I've always been a floater. Yeah. I'm always a floater no matter where. I'm like I, I can resonate with a lot of people, but mm -hmm. I've never like – I would never consider myself in either like group, quote, yeah. unquote. So I think I was a welcoming face because I was comfortable. Mm -hmm. Not comfortable in a bad way, but I was comfortable with my group. You knew the environment. Because I knew the, the environment. Yeah. I knew the team. The I dynamic. was there since I was 9 or mm -hmm. 10, so I was comfortable that way. Yeah. Um, so I – I think always just being a friendly face is very good to be like that person Something to strive for as a teammate. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think, I think I took a break mm -hmm. and I was trying to remember, I told you, I'm like, Oh, yeah. I like a blackout. I'm like, <laughs> like push it out. You took a break from travel ball. At yes. Some point. I yes. think it was that 14 to 15 era mm -hmm. where I played, I think 12 U 13 yeah. and then like 14, 15 was weird. And then I came back 15, 16. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. That would make sense. Yeah. So then I caught you right when you re-entered yeah. travel ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was, even though you were, you knew that the girls, you were around the organization, mm -hmm. you knew what to expect. It was still kind of a little bit weird in terms of like, yeah. you took a, a break or so, not the end of the world, but now I got to get back into the swing of things. Yeah. Not only that too, but being like, Hey, yeah. <laughs> hi, hi. <laughs> do, you, do you remember do you me? Remember me? <laughs> um, oh my yeah. God. Like, or what's that TikTok sound? Hey. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. That yeah. was me. <laughs> and it's like, I love when I hey. Um, yeah, that was definitely weird yeah. too. And you, you, Everyone was welcoming, but, mm. you you know, a lot happens during a year of a season where you mm -hmm. weren't there. Yeah. So it's like, what did I miss? How do I catch back yes. up on that? Like, am I, what are my skills at the same level? Yeah, or maybe yeah. they kept progressing during that year that I did not. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was definitely, and again, you're in your head about it. A hundred percent in your head about yeah. it. I get it. I get it. Well, we were definitely, I think, there for each other. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think it was. I think we both, without knowing, helped each other out. One hundred percent. I look back on those days yeah. and I'm like, I think Gabby, you yeah. <laughs> played a very also pivotal role, yeah. and we're. I think 
I have, I think I have a lot of softball friends still, mm-hmm. but you are one of the people that we pick up where we left yes. off. Yes. You being the same personality and yes. friendliness and welcomingness and very just, similar to one yeah, another. Yeah, and even just um, our families too in a very yes. good way. Yes. yes. I remember you joining being like, thank God. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh wow. <laughs> I was uh, like, a, um, uh, what is it, fish out of water? <laughs> no, you were not, but I understand yeah. how one could feel that way. Yeah, yeah. You were oh, someone no. I gravitate towards and I'm forever grateful. I think for I gravitate so towards you. you in return. So it's like, as you looked at me, I look yeah. like at you at, for that. Right, right. Oh my God. Amazing. So then here we are today, uh, 10 years later, which is crazy. That's insane. Insane. Yes. Um, okay. So I know we're creeping up through like the 15, 16 mm-hmm. age, 17 age, that's yeah. senior year of high, of, of high school. Um, co- playing on a very competitive team, when I came over to TLI, that's when I first started recruiting. Did yeah. you do any recruiting or did you have the um, decision already in your head that you didn't want to pursue college ball. Interesting ask. Um, when you say recruiting, do you mean like recruiting tournaments or reaching out to coaching? Fair. You were with us in recruiting yeah. tournaments. We did clinics together. Yeah, I, did. I, I went to, I, we went to <laughs> a lot of clinics together. What am I, I saying? I went to clinics. I went to recruiting events. Um, so then when did that flip almost happen? Yeah, it's To really, say, I don't know if I want to be doing college softball. It's interesting you say that. And now that I'm speaking it out <laughs> loud and, and talking about it, yeah. I think Mind you, I took a break around 14, 15, and yeah. I think that's a, as young as you are, I think you're starting to think about the future. You're mm-hmm. like, what am I doing here? Yeah. Um, I think the decision was always made in my head that I didn't know if I wanted to pursue, mm-hmm. but I think I went to recruiting events. If I found the right fit, yes. then the flip would be made that I would go. Okay. I think okay. it was a vice versa perspective for me. Interesting. So let me, let me play that back if I got this right. So... Um, if, if, do you, so you felt if, if there was a right fit somewhere, that would have maybe like sealed the deal almost. Yeah. But since the fit didn't happen, why force something? Exactly. For and I think for recruiting for softball or just any athletic yeah. sport in general, you kind of put yourself out there. Yeah. Where I think I, and you know, maybe this was a subconscious <laughs> yeah. uh, act. I don't know if I ever just put myself out there. I think I just played and I had a good time and I, mm. I displayed my energy. And I think I did every now and then get a couple coaches, but I was like, um, like yeah. I, I, I don't know if it, nothing ever flipped on. Nothing I think ever I, stuck truly yeah. with you. That, like, oh, I want to like keep talking to that yeah, coach exactly. at school. Okay, exactly. Interesting. So it was like almost like a gradual, like, oh, that one didn't really work out. I didn't really love that one. Yeah. Like, yeah, nothing really clicked for you. And I was never. And I again, I've loved the sport of softball. I'm here to this yeah. day. I don't know if I ever internally either, like not only that, but I never internally was like, this isn't the right fit. Let me find the next one. Mm. It was just like, oh, that's not a right fit. Okay, then I'll yeah. just continue doing my thing. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, that's really interesting yeah. perspective because I know sometimes it's like, a, you know, a lot of girls will make that decision like hard, like you know, draw a line in the sand, mm-hmm. like yeah, I'm not recruiting. Like that means that I might be done with like competitive mm-hmm. softball, but. For you, it, you were always doing competitive softball yeah. up until the very end. I think I always felt weird yeah. because I remember looking around and people being like, oh, I'm going to go talk to so-and-so or like yes. I'm going to go try and talk to – or email or like put yeah. my, or try to get myself in front of that coach. And I just remember thinking like I don't feel that desire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think maybe that's why I never put myself out there in the extent other people did. Uh, I just never, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like you know, when you just feel your soul calling. Yeah. As weird as it sounds, I was like, like, I love. I don't think that was. That yeah, was it. and I yeah. loved softball, and I love what it gave me, yes. but it just wasn't that root. Yeah, I I totally mm-hmm. hear you. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah. I've never, I actually never asked you that, so I've been uh, eager think, to know. But yeah, I, I think a lot of people think it was like a hard line, but yeah. I think it was just a gradual like I love this currently and what it served its purpose in my life at that time, mm-hmm. but maybe. A different door for this era. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear you. Um, I think a lot of um, I call everyone the stitch ballers. If you, I don't feel like that enough. I, yeah. coined, I coined that um, as our listeners, and um, I think a lot of stitch ballers that are currently in that 14, yeah. 15, 16 year old age will resonate a lot. And with that's that. okay too. Like yeah. I, I, I struggled for a little bit, and I think I was talking to you about this mm-hmm. where. After I, softball was literally my life. If you mm-hmm. ask my cousins, my family, my friends, they'd be like, you free? I'd be like, mm, no. <laughs> got they'd practice, like, got games. Yeah. Or I'd be like, I'm in Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'd be like <laughs> random states. Um, and I, they'd be like, where are you? And I'd be like, not nah, home. Um, I, like, it was my life. And yes. then after that certain time period between travel and high school and whatever, I was like, who am I? Yes. Like, what is this? Yeah, yeah. It, it was a big, large chunk of your identity. 100%. We're going to get to that when we talk about okay. some college stuff. Um, okay, so 
gradually over time decided, eh, I don't really know if I want to do college. Yeah. I'm not going to actively like go out of my way to pursue it. Mm -hmm. If something happens, it happens. If not, I'll continue doing my thing. Yeah. Um, cut to senior year high school then. Yes. Pivotal time, because at this rate, I think you kind of started to realize, I, I'm just going to be doing a normal every day. I was literally student. vibing. Like yeah. when I, uh, and I was, softball was great. Like I literally was in the top 100 softball players yeah. for Long Island, which is crazy to crazy. think. Crazy. But I was vibing. Yeah, and you was were like, slaying eh. the game. <laughs> literally. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, you start obviously the normal like college process with mm -hmm. like applications, things like that. But like, how does now entering in your se senior season of high school ball, how is your mentality, has it, is it different than previous years? Um, knowing that there is an end for at least the short term future after yeah. the season ends. What does that look like to you? It's weird. I think not only like softball, but just life when you know there's an end to something and there's an end to everything in yeah. some way, shape or form. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I was very lucky for the girls that I played with during high school. I think they mm -hmm. were great people and mm -hmm. I was surrounded by good people at that time. And I also, I think I was surrounded by great softball players that also didn't go to college. So that yes. kind of reaffirmed my feelings in a yeah, way. Um, yeah. But going into the season, I think I was like, all right, like make it your best. Like mm -hmm. this is put it all on the field. Who knows the next league and I think that was the last really competitive softball mm -hmm. game that I've played and I kind of just put it all out there. Yeah. Like I would come off the field stained or yeah. I would go on the field stained. Yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. My <laughs> uniforms were never clean and they were clean, but like they were always oh my the God, marks, the dirt stained. marks on them. Yeah. Oh my God, 100%. Yeah. So I think it was just like, leave it, put your heart out there because your heart's in it. Like my yeah. heart was always in it. Um, just in a different way. So. Yeah. No, I love that. Um, now I, I have to, I have to ask <laughs> how, no, don't be scared. <laughs> how was that final game of yours? Oh, Do you remember it? Yes. Like your senior day, maybe well, senior day might've been different than your final game, but regardless, how was that last time of yours? Oh my God. It's a wait, something else just popped okay, in my head. Okay, go for it. So it's a final game, but it's my junior year final okay, game. Okay. And it's, oh my God, I'm going to drop names, but yeah. in the most loving way, like this is me admiring them as yeah. people. Um, so I remember two, my mm -hmm. junior year last game ever, and then my senior year last okay, game ever. Go for it. So junior year, it's the playoffs, Oceanside, mind you, Massapequa softball. Massapequa was great for yeah, sports. No, I think Massapequa still is a really oh, big 100%. powerhouse school for sports. Yeah, but we're so big, so I feel like there's a yeah, lot to pick from. That's um, fair. But softball, we had like never progressed anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I think it was 2015 or 16. That was like the final. That was. 2015 junior year for us yeah. yeah junior year for us we actually were like conference champs so we were finally like putting ourselves on the mark yeah. but it was Oceanside we were away and it was one of those games where it was like best out of five and you, it was away home away home and yeah. blah, blah 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 have you ever played at Oceanside no I have not I think they did I think they after I graduated put in a fake like fence oh, oh um but they had no fence if you hit that ball or you hit it in yes. the right spot, God. That was my high school. Francesca played with no fence, and then they had the uh, bendable. For yeah, like something word. like that. Yeah, so because it was like the shared field, so I, I so get what you mean. So it was so hard because you would a double would turn into home runs, home runs and then, yeah. yeah. But I remember Christina Hamden, such a loving person that I aspire to be yeah. personality wise. Um, she is such a, like a kind, caring person. Center field. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, runner on second, two outs, and we were. Up by one. Okay, okay. And if I'm pretty sure, uh, like, or, no, we were tied. Okay. Close. Krista Carcaterra, my throwing partner, yeah. hit a grand slam. <laughs> that's how we, that's how, I'm like, it's a, all coming back to me. <laughs> Krista, love you. She hit a grand slam her wow. senior year. And that was her last, like, one of her last at bats was mm -hmm. a grand slam. Wow. Um, that is iconic. Very interesting, but she, Christina Hamden, center field, took a ground ball. Yeah. And it popped out of her glove, and the winning score rounded and her that was her last play also didn't oh, go to school for yeah. uh, didn't go to college, college for softball. softball so I remember watching her be so I don't want to I don't wanna know if she was devastated I don't want to speak yeah, on but just, of her feelings. So very emotional for she the day. literally dropped in center field yeah. and I remember looking at her and being like oh my god that was her last play mm -hmm. ever so as a junior going into senior year you I was have like that playing back oh my yes. god I play back when I think of softball that's a key memory yeah um and oh my god I remember them rounding and scoring and them celebrating and yeah. us being like like yesterday. What you, and I was cut off. I was first base, so I was waiting yes. for her cut to throw home. Wow. So it was like me in the moment, too. That was crazy. Yeah. But my senior year last game, we were at East Meadow, mm -hmm. and you played there. Yes. But they had a um, a weird field set up mm -hmm. where left field was really short. Yes. Like, if you just hit a good ball, that it was, <laughs> it was out. out of here. I had a home run there once. I am not a home run hitter. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was not. Yeah. Um, but right fields went on for miles. Yeah. So if you hit it that right spot too, it would go. Mm -hmm. I was on first base. 
And Sydney Tamborello, again, a good friend that I see every mm -hmm. now and then too, so love you, Sid. <laughs> she, I think probably would have been like a double, but it hit the right spot. So I scored from first base and I remember running home and the coach yeah. was like, go, like, <laughs> and I'm not a runner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I'm not a runner. <laughs> he was like, put, like, I remember, you know, when you round second and you look at the third base yeah. coach, he was like, go. I remember just being like, oh my God, Amanda, like run. <laughs> yeah, run your little booty I, off. Yeah. I was running my booty off. And Sydney ended up, she ended up hitting a home run from that. Mm -hmm. So she, I remember her like catching up on it. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Um, and I remember just the energy just being yeah. like, oh my God, we're in it. Like I yeah. think, I don't remember if that was the tying score or like, but we were in it. Yeah. Um, but we were away. Mm -hmm. So mind you, um, they had less licks. And I yes. remember going into the dugout for, our last at bat. Yes. And the coach just like tapped my helmet, oh. Coach Malone, the guy that also went to my ninth grade English class. Yes, the same coach. So coming back full circle. Full circle. And he kind of just patted my helmet in a way that he never did before. And did that like get you? And I think it was in recognition of just like, this is your last at bat. Like, mm -hmm. and I think it was like, get it together, but also recognizing this is your last moment. Yeah, as a like team. he's yeah. really like appreciative of everything that like you've given to the team probably yeah. almost. And he's like, you got this, like make it the best one yet. Yeah, I think it was just yeah. in recognition too of my moment, maybe knowing yeah. that the other people graduating were going to school and I, he like everyone yes. knew I wasn't. So it was like a, this is your moment. Like wow. it, it like settle like, into this. shine, yeah. Or just like settle into it and appreciate that at the Embrace time. Embrace it. Yeah. Yes. Wow. That is, that gave me goosebumps. Oh, so oh my God. I remember wow. it. That, to have that as one of your last like game memories. Yeah. Incredible. Oh I, my God. Yeah. And I remember too, now that I'm talking about yeah. it, when I was talking about first base mm -hmm. going home, um, my dad just surrounded by baseball. Yeah. His boss's wife used to come watch me play because mm -hmm. they had older kids. So I was a little bit younger where she would still miss going to things. Yeah. And she has a video. Oh my God, I remember this <laughs> video. It was like so pixelated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Sydney and me running. <laughs> like, oh, no. oh my God. And I remember every, like, even the fans were like, oh my God. Yeah, like, and like I just had that memory yeah. too. Like, I could probably go find it. Oh my God. I could probably go find it and I'll send it well, to you. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Send this to me before we drop the episode and yeah. I'll, I'll definitely put it in. That's so fun and awesome. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. No, thank you for having yeah. me talk about it. Oh my God. Yeah. I could just see like the, the smile and the yeah. energy it brought you. Oh my God. I didn't realize how big I was smiling. <laughs> <just> <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. Oh my God. Alrighty. So, what a whirlwind yeah, of the senior big. year. Mm -hmm. um, when did you decide, because you, you went to Adelphi as, mm -hmm. a, as a typical student there, when did that decision come about senior year for you? And to how go to Adelphi? Yeah, and how did you land on Adelphi? So funny. I'm going to be so honest with you. So my sister went to Cortland, and she mm -hmm. was somebody that was like, oh, maybe I'll stay home. Yeah. And then she ended up going like five hours away. And I, growing up, was always the one to be like to my mom, bye, bye, I'm leaving. <laughs> And I, very weird. I'm, yeah. I'm also very decisive. I'm mm -hmm. not an indecisive person. I guess I just never felt called somewhere. I applied, yeah. I got into every school I applied to and yeah. I had different options and it was April of that mm -hmm. year and I was like, where do I <laughs> wanna go? Yeah. Um, and I don't know, like, and I think when it came down to it, going away scared me a little yeah. bit, like in the moment. And mind you, I lived at Adelphi and I never went home. So yeah. don't know why that scared it's so me. Felt, so your Adelphi experience is close-ish to home, but yeah. but you very much so became involved with the, oh my the campus, the community, where it felt like you actually were four hours away, I probably. barely went home. Yeah. And I literally had a car, and yeah. I would, like, barely go home. I don't know if you know this. I did everything under the sun at Adelphi. Oh, I, I'm gonna, we're going to get to that. Okay. I, I, I remember, like, trying to keep up with like, your, like, you know, oh, Instagram yeah, like and things Instagram, like that. Yeah. yeah. And I could tell, like, how involved you were yeah. with, the, with the school, which is so awesome. But I think that goes hand in hand with me telling to you. I think yeah. I was missing a team. Yes. Yes. Let's go into that then. So you get into college at Adelphi, new environment, mm -hmm. don't know many people there. Yeah. Um, now you don't have this team that you could just yeah. call friends and family instantly. It's funny. So how does that make you feel as a freshman? I was like, hey. And <laughs> I, then, hey, I'm here. I could yeah. talk to a brick wall. Ask anybody. I'm like, hey. I, I don't know what it is. I just I think I just don't shut up, and mm -hmm. that's just something about me. I was lucky enough going to a school that a couple people that I had gone to high school with I knew were there. Yeah. Um, and to this day, my good friend Jessie, I was telling, you, was in her wedding this past yeah. summer. We ended up going together, so I thankfully had somebody that I was comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, anything I do, it's so weird, and I don't know if this is me being. I'm gonna call myself crazy, and I know <laughs> I'm not crazy, but anything I do, whether it's a team or when I say team I also mean like work or yeah I, I was literally like a tour guide like I remember and to this day some of the people I t was a tour guide with some of my best friends and I don't know if it's just <sighs> like whoever I work with I like 
I try to make a team out of. Yeah. Um, but no, I think that makes a lot of sense because to be quite honest, like in, even like me working mm-hmm. right now in the corporate world, I find that I actually produce better results myself in a team setting. Yeah. Knowing that we're all working together, 100%. we all have our parts to to make up the whole mm-hmm. almost. Yeah. I could totally see where you're coming from, especially if you didn't have this team mm-hmm. to fill that void. Yeah. I was yeah. definitely like, uh, yeah. And I, I did so many things. I was an RA. I like mm-hmm. did so many things and it's funny, they're still one of my I got I get dinner with them every year and it's like yeah. we kind of re meet. So I think I, I find value and I find comfortability mm-hmm. in group settings yes. and I think I attribute that to softball a hundred percent I think everyone can relate to that yeah even just and, and any athlete can yeah that, exactly yeah. and we were saying too I think you meet people and you can tell if you were an athlete you can tell who also was oh an my athlete. god we, yes. uh, let me I told Amanda this literally the other day I was like Amanda it's scary how much I could tell in like a normal world mm-hmm. who was an, a student athlete and who wasn't yeah because 100%. I'm sorry and I kind of get myself apparent. into there because I know I wasn't like a college student athlete. No, but you played a lot of, you were a competitive athlete yeah. for most of your life. So I think, yeah, I, I kind of. I still bucket you in that I, group. I, me too, low key. <laughs> and it's weird because I I think people at Adelphi don't know at, uh, like softball me, but some people do. Yeah. But it's Majority weird. they don't. Yeah, yeah, they really didn't. And I yeah. wasn't bucketed into that. And I was like, oh yeah. my God, like where do I fall? Right. Like what is You have this? this, you actually now have to figure out a new identity. Yeah. You're probably pulling from past characteristics, strengths, skills that yeah. you developed in, in softball into now these new environments, new settings that doesn't include a yeah. softball. and I do that in work now too. Yeah, like, wait, Claire, dive into that then. What exactly do you think you can attribute to your, your student-athlete softball development that you're carrying into who you are today and how you present today in the yeah. world, real world? Absolutely. I remember, so I was, I actually ended up being captain. I was telling you Darby, Kelly, and me were the three mm-hmm. freshmen that yeah. were brought up together and we were all captains together. Mm-hmm. And I think that y- you, I find I find it very natural to lead. Mm-hmm. Like I ended up doing Greek life, and mm-hmm. I loved what it gave me. But I literally was president, and I was like, "Look at this really great resume <laughs> builder!" Like I did things just because I think I was able to find a leadership in them. Yeah. And I, I do that still to this day, which mm-hmm. is crazy. Um, if I'm down on my luck, or I'm down, and I'm not doing well, or I'm not, mm-hmm. or maybe like me not doing well is just like. Yeah. doing average right um not showing my emotions or like not you know when like you mess up a play yeah and the head's you down and you're like yeah like, oh my god you have to be like all right next one like yeah keep it, keep it going keep it moving and yeah. I do that at work like if things go bad I'm like all right I got the next one keep it moving it's more reaction yeah. instead of dwelling on like yeah. oh no I'm helpless yes. and in the moment I'm like yeah you're like, like <laughs> like why did I do that <laughs> we're like come on but like that's but then it's like let me know let me figure out how I could change yes this or um coachability yes yes or taking criticism or constructive criticism Ooh, good one that yes. I think that's a big softball yeah. attribute that even Adelphi life student being and also at work like you report you always are going to report yeah. to somebody unless you're the CEO and whoever you are I want to be you. yeah but just being like yep you know what I recognize that I did that's what I did wrong mm-hmm. this is how I'm going to make it better I was just gonna I was just gonna chime in because I think coaches in general mm-hmm. can give you feedback whether that's like you know, rude, you know, in a rude way or in a, in a nice way, whatever constructive, constructive criticism you get, mm-hmm. that plays a big role in the corporate world because I actually can, as you said, accept and hold myself accountable mm-hmm. and own up to yeah. the mistake or own up to the issue or accept that I'm doing something wrong. But then as a, my mentality, really stemming from being a student athlete is, Okay, how do I fix this? Yeah. It doesn't really, I feel it doesn't phase us as much because we're yeah. kind of used to it from sports. 100%. <laughs> might be sad to say, but it's, and, it's and the, the reality of it. And yeah. also I think softball wise, and um, I'm trying to relate to other sports too, but yeah. if you mess up, oh my God, everyone's seeing the whole field. Oh, Everybody's like, oh, that yeah. happened. Like, and maybe that was the game mm-hmm. losing mistake. Yeah. So I always will highlight my mistakes. Yes. Like, if, if something goes wrong, I'm like, oh, that was me. Yeah, or like, like hey, that's on me. Yeah. That's my bad. Yeah. Or if I find something I did wrong or something my team did wrong, yeah. I'll be like, hey, boss. Yeah. Like, this one, before you find it, let me rattle myself yes. and be like, this is what I'm doing wrong and this is what I already did to fix it. And people value that, mm-hmm. not even just in the work corporate setting, yeah. but people value that across the board. 100%. Owning up to your mistakes, to yeah. what you're doing wrong, holding yourself accountable, telling everyone, I could, tr- yeah. I could fix it or I will fix it or I want to help fix it, 
whatever the deal is. And that's so funny. My I agree there. Boss and she's yeah. kind of switched teams, but um yeah. I, I admire her dearly. Mm -hmm. She one time said to me, and I think I was an intern, mm -hmm. she was like, You never want to be the smartest person in the room. Yeah. Because if you are, you're not learning. And mm -hmm. I think that's both softball. If you're the best player, like you know when you see someone do a great play and you're like, Wow, that was an amazing yeah. whether they turned a double play or they pivoted and they switched the like whatever it was, yeah. recognizing who can give you that feedback mm -hmm. or like when you do something wrong, that's giving you feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. she always just said like, you never want to be the smartest person in the room, no, and you, you can transpire. Yeah, you because like it's it's one thing to be the smartest in the room or the best on the team. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like you're really not progressing as yeah. you should be. You're not being pushed as mm -hmm. you should be. Now, if you're if, if it's even playing field or even like people above you and like that yeah. like, skill set wise, it's like now you have something to like strive for. You you have the image in your mind yeah. that you could like almost. Right, I want to achieve that, or mm -hmm. I want to get to that level that she's at. Or like 100%. maybe you're good at one thing and they're good at another thing, yes. and like you just have different skill sets. It's like, and not that it should be um, intimidating, mm -hmm. but when you're like, wow, like you, you feel that push to be like, I need to be better there. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think that's a good thing that softball taught me of taking failure, figuring yes. it out, and moving and making it better. I 100% agree um, with myself. Um, I know a lot of law student athletes, yeah, law softballers, law stitch ballers would agree with you <laughs> yes, too. Yes, stitch ballers, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, last question I think I have with like your college stuff. Um, for you, right, now you, you kind of alluded to it. You, you were trying out a bunch of different new things in college. Yeah. You joined a lot of different clubs and activities. Um, how was it trying to create a new identity for yourself internally now that softball really wasn't a big part of your life anymore? I think, or I maybe, sorry, or maybe it was right. a big part of your life. Maybe like you did, I don't know, club or intramural. So I don't really know actually what you did. So <laughs> let me know, like, what does that look like for yeah, you? Yeah, I remember going to Delphi and being like, maybe I'll, they didn't have a club, they didn't have a club softball team. And I was like, do I want to start it? Oh. I was like, do I want to do that? Yeah, it's that's so, you're like ambitious, but I think I can do it. And I, was, and I just like, and maybe I subconsciously had free time and I poured myself into everything and I think that's mm -hmm. what I did. Yeah. Any open job position, any, I literally worked at like the recreation center. Yeah. I liked anything that I was able to try and if I failed and I didn't like it, then I failed and I didn't like it. Yeah. Or like I, I tried and yes. I think, or maybe if it wasn't for me, but I literally poured myself into everything mm -hmm. and maybe it was a response to not having that. Mm. If there was just clubs, like I would do things that I probably don't think that high school me would have thought college yeah. me did mm -hmm. um and just finding it's if people say what's the the phrase like birds of a feather flock mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and I think a lot of the people I befriended were in similar positions or similar characteristics or just personality of trying to find people that were like them mm -hmm. and that wanted to just better themselves yeah I, I I give you a lot of like kudos almost because I think for a lot of softball players most a good chunk of us play in college, mm -hmm. but a lot of what you have to, had to deal with in college hit a lot of us post grad. So like you yeah. kind of got to experience what this looks like four years prior than I had to experience this. Yes, but I would argue that I probably had an easier time mm -hmm. because I was able, like I think post grad life is hard mm -hmm. because you're going from school to corporate America, yeah. whatever you end up doing, and that's a hard transition regardless. Fair, fair. So I found who I was with leadership positions, and then mm -hmm. I put that into my work. Interesting. So I think I had an easier time, and it was hard in the moment. Well, like, right, right. Not Looking easier, back, but yeah. yeah, like I think it maybe maybe helped my transition. Yeah, no, I, I could totally see yeah. that. Um, I, I, I totally can see how that could have been, yeah. not I said easier, but just a little smoother of a transi yeah. transition almost. Mm -hmm. Was there anything else um, from your college time that you were hoping to touch upon today? I, I think, I know we like briefly talked before this. Yeah. That could um, have been most of it, but I you let me know. I think that was most of it. I think maybe the one other thing is like, sometimes I think about who I could have been. Ooh. Yeah, I yeah. think about. Like if, if, if I did pursue yeah. softball in college, go into that a bit more. I don't even know where I want it to go, yeah. but it's like, who could I have been? But I think that's also a lot of different areas of life. Like mm -hmm. if you are deciding on your career path, yeah. whether it's a nurse or whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, to go into biology or right. uh, all the a teacher, like maybe you're tossing up what you want to do. And you're like, what if I did that instead of that? Or where would I be? And I, I think about that version of me a lot because I think, and I said this to you, mm -hmm. softball fills a part of me that mm -hmm. I don't think any, like I've never found anything else that yeah. satisfies me in that way. And um, I think it's just, I think about that version of myself, yeah. but maybe just honoring who I would have been with being proud of who I am today and oh. making, like, you know, being wow, proud of what I did. Awesome. Well, I think there's a lot of what ifs in life. Yeah. Like you said, like, 
everyone thinks about what ifs. Yeah. What if I eat an apple today instead of an orange for all I care, you know? Or, like there's a lot of what ifs. Or like the invisible string theory, yes. or like the burnt toast theory. Yes. That's crazy to think about too. Yes, mm -hmm. 100%. And for you to, to think what if, what if, what if, like I could have always been like, what if I didn't play in yeah. college? You yeah. know, a lot of girls go through that mm -hmm. every single day, every single year. We see that a lot with a yeah. lot of the Nitro seniors or junior seniors on the team. Um, it, it's a, something that every girl will consider. Yeah. So I don't blame you for thinking, okay, yeah, like, what if, like, did I, do I have any regrets? Well, you know, like, I, I, did I miss out on something, like, yeah. amazing? But your journey is your journey. Yeah. It's individual to you. And, and life is still great. Like, I love, great. like, life is beautiful. Yeah. So it's, you know, maybe paying homage to younger me for deciding, mm -hmm. hey, maybe I want to take a different route. And I think also stitch ballers, yeah. it's okay if you don't play. Yeah. Like I remember being like, oh my God, like what's gonna happen? Yeah, like you're what like, are people you're gonna like, think? Oh, people are like, are gonna be like, look at me differently almost. Or I remember just feeling bad and mm -hmm. I remember, oh my God, love my parents dearly. Yeah. I remember just being like, oh my God, I spent so much <laughs> time, money, energy. <laughs> like I'd be like, hey. Kind of were like all for nothing yeah, yeah, and not yeah. even nothing, but I remember my dad was like, you turned out great. Yeah. You you'd kept you out of trouble. Whatever yeah. that trouble might have been, I don't know. I like, didn't do anything. Yeah. But you know, on the weekends and, and things and it, I think um, that was scary to be yes. like, oh God, like how do I tell them? Yeah. yeah. And I think I always knew, like I was saying. Well, that, I think that speaks volumes mm -hmm. as well. So I, th I really appreciate cool. you sharing all that. Thank you for wow. letting me talk it out. I feel like yeah. I haven't done that in a very long time. It's nice to like reflect and air things yeah. out. And because like, I know like we're probably very similar. We like have everything stuck up yeah. here. We reflect a lot. We think a lot. So it's nice just to like yeah, 100%. share it out to the world. Um, all right. So now, so you didn't play in college. Um, you were very involved with other things. Yep. You found a lot of other passions. It really yep. led you to who you are today, 100%. formed you to like who you are at the core. Let's talk and share to everyone what our plans are for this summer. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was saying earlier, or we were saying yeah. that um, I value my softball friendships because I could just pick up where I left off with yeah. them. We literally, we, we played 15, 16, so sophomore year to like Junior? mid, yeah, like mid senior. Once I committed, I stopped. I don't know. To, when, when did I end? I, don't, I, I could know. not. I think I just like was like. <laughs> Gotta you know, go. <laughs> we must have dipped the same time yeah. from TLI, which is fine. But we were so close, kind of like fell off only because we, we went our separate paths. Yeah. Not to say like we didn't think about each other or like say no. like, no, I never want to speak to Amanda again. I was asking about you. And I yeah. even said to you the other day, I was like, I paid attention to what you were doing. Yeah. And I think social media, that's a whole other topic. Yeah. But just like how <laughs> we stay connected. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it yeah. was weird. It was weird. We always like saw it, like kept up from a distance. But mm -hmm. we never like reconnected until last year. Pretty yeah. much, we were texting. Yeah, yeah, literally, and I remember, um, so it's weird, and I, I think I spoke, I said I wanted to touch upon this, I'm yes. going to, it's, it's one of those things, softball, and like, you, you said this to me, I trained at a very high mm -hmm. level, so, and granted, I'm rusty, but <laughs> I went to a company, like, barbecue, Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there was a dunk tank, oh. and there was, I, I work in HR, so the, another HR team member was in the dunk tank, and she was like, Amanda, like, come throw. Yeah, come knock me off. And it's just, I can't, like, I can't throw, like, like, like you can't fake a bad throw. Fake a yeah. bad throw. It's so just gonna be boom. It just went. It like it, and I literally was just like it was like you were catching like a ball for your pitcher and you were nailing her out at second base. So literally, like it yeah. just happened and I dunked her yeah. and I, I like turned around and I was like, ha 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 and everyone was like They're like Amanda They were like, You can throw and I was like, Yeah. It's like a secret where like because yeah. when does that come up? I work in But also like who who am I to look at someone and be like you were a softball player? Exactly. Like exactly. in that setting that you're in at work. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And like work me is oh my God, a different personality than this me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they were like, you can throw. And granted, I, we graduated during COVID. Yeah. So they had a co-ed softball team pre-COVID and it had just started last year. Mm -hmm. So I finally got back into it and I made these connections. I was like, wow, like, yeah. I probably would have never talked to these people if I didn't join the co company the softball team. Yeah, team, right. And I texted Gabby. <laughs> so there's always a- um, Girl minimum a girl on co-ed teams. Yeah. play typically just so, you know, it's an even playing field, yeah. whatever that might look like. <laughs> um, Grant, oh my God, too. I feel like people would hit ground balls to me and be like, wow, I didn't expect you to. I I'm know, like, like why are you taking it easy on me? Rude. Yeah. <laughs> like, rude. I got you out. Anyway, yeah. moving on. <laughs> I, we're going to bust down their ego. Um, I texted Gabby and yeah. I was like, oh my God, like, and we're short girls. Again, though, yeah. us saying we were always just comfortable. Like, I knew if I texted you, you weren't going to be like, why? Are I'd she? be like, who the hell is that? But that's be? just, yeah, literally. <laughs> but that's just like who I think we were and yeah. what softball made us and gave us that connection. Yeah. And I was like, do you want to 
play. Yeah, you're like, by chance, are you free on Thursday? We have a, a game and we're yeah. short girls. Like, I know it's very random and um, it might be like really like, you know, inconvenient. So like, <laughs> you can't let me know, but I would love for you to fill in. I was and like, I, yeah. yeah. I remember being like, hey, mom, I texted Gab and she was like, <laughs> Kesselina. I was like, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that un- unfortunately didn't transpire because that no. was just a crazy league. But then this summer, I similar- it. I would have reversed it back. <laughs> but that's, it's working out. We had yes. our first practice. Yeah. So my friend from, from childhood, Max, uh, he texted me. He was a baseball player too. And he was like, would you be interested in joining yeah. my, my friends and I co- co-ed softball team? And I was like, well, sure. I was like, I do have coaching as a commitment. So I yeah. yeah, that's one thing I, I that takes priority because I already committed to yeah, that. Yeah, 100%. But I was like, on well, my free time, sure, I'll, I'll play. Yeah. So then he was like, good. Like, if you have any friends, let me know. And I'm like, I don't really have many softball friends on Long Island. I'm not going to lie. A lot of my friends are still, like, you know, in, ba- in Boston yeah. with college. So coming, I'm like, I have, like, three friends here, like, that I can reach out to. You being one yeah, of them. Yeah. And I'm so happy you said yes and that it's going to work like, out. yeah. And I love – that's what I'm saying, though. We're yeah. like, softball fills a part of me that – I, I still want to honor that past version of me yes. that loved it, and I still love it, just in a yeah. different capacity. But also, you said um, coaching is my priority. Yeah. I think being a student athlete mm-hmm. gave me that priority sense mm-hmm. where, like, where my dad always said, if you're early, you're on time. If you're yes. on time, you're late. And if you're late, that's not acceptable. And I still ring true. Softball practice for this now summer yeah. league, I'm the first one in the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, I was I was also 15 minutes early. You were what, like maybe 17 minutes, 20 minutes early. Yeah, I was only there we for were a few minutes. The first minutes. two there. Well, the two girls were yeah. the, two, the only two people there, and I was like, but that still rings true to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is so funny, and yeah. I agree. It's one of the things that softball instilled in us is 100 time management, priorities, mm-hmm. knowing like how to like spread myself out yeah, on different things. Oh my god, that's yeah, so funny. 100%. Yep. So. Maybe I'll like do like a, a, a vlog episode and like do like a game this summer between all of us. That would be yeah, so much fun. But it's funny too because I'm gonna highlight what you were kind of saying. Yeah. And it's like a, yours. I always like, um, not what's the word I'm looking for? Hype myself down? Yeah. Well, or you like, yeah you you don't. Um, I know where you're going with this. Yeah. Um, I think anyone does this. They don't like obviously come off as like cocky and yeah. like I'm this like it's best person ever. So, also like, a decade ago. Where yeah. I'm, like, I played ten years ago. But like. <laughs> When I was introducing Amanda to like some of the people on the team, I was like, "This is my friend Amanda." And then like I was talking to my friend Max, and he was, I, I was like, Amanda didn't really introduce herself that well, in my opinion. I was like, "Don't like let her fool you. Like she played at a very competitive yeah. level. You trained at a very high level. Yeah. Like Amanda, it was a great softball athlete. She's not just like, <laughs> she's my friend that hasn't touched a softball <laughs> in years. Yeah. yeah so I know no, what you mean. You kind of that. humbled yourself a bit in your introductions, but I was there to thank you. You're, you're on. She, she, you're a good friend. Thank you. For yeah. that. And vice versa for you. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, you, <laughs> and you played at a higher level than mm-hmm. I did at after um, high school too. Yeah. So yeah, but it was so funny to like so just funny. be like, hey, yeah. I, I deserve a place to be here. Yes, you deserve um, a spot on the team almost. And also yeah. I deserve a spot in the softball world. Yes. M- maybe it's a little bit different, but I like, I, I still, my, my like yeah. algorithms are softball plays. Yeah, I believe you. And it's weird because I wouldn't play for years or I mean, I would, but in weird capacities and it'd yeah. be like, you like a first base play and I'll be like, oh, like what, what could have been done better? Or, wow, that's a right. phenomenal play. Right. You're still very connected to the mm-hmm. sport. Meanwhile, like you might have not touched a softball for a few years, mm-hmm. whatever the deal might have been. I, I totally, I, I don't know. I just love every yeah. single bit of this conversation. And I show up to like the co-ed games yeah. so excited yeah, and they're like, pumped. this girl's crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, hey. Yeah. But then it also goes back to like us bringing the energy and like we yeah. were getting ground balls at practice and it's funny. I didn't, we, we didn't say anything at practice, but oh I'm like. God. Amanda, literally the other night at dinner, yeah. I was like, Amanda, um, and did I was you like, feel that those ground balls were kind of weak to us? I literally <laughs> felt like I was 12 again, like <laughs> trying to like figure out. Like we were too fragile yeah. to get a ground ball. I'm I was like, like, am I can fragile? Handle a ground ball. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't even know. But, we, so but again, we bring the energy and I think we're yes. a pivotal, just like, hey, I'm like, I don't know. I, maybe this is against um, <laughs> yeah. what I, character, not the word I'm looking yeah. for. But I worked as a tour guide okay, and in yeah. the admissions office, my coach Malone, again, full circle, yeah. he wrote me a letter of um, admission, like a letter of recommendation. Yeah. Thank you. And little old me read it because <laughs> I had the access to do so. Not yeah. good of me, but I did. And I remember he was just like, Amanda has a very uncanny way mm. of bringing good energy. Yes. And, and 
I'm still weird to this day, and maybe that's why <laughs> I like, embrace the weird. I think yeah, we but you have do. to. Yeah, you yeah. Have to. and I think it just like makes life fun. Yes, and I yes. just love it. Just like going on the field and laughing and like being yeah. like, what the hell was yeah. that? Or like whatever. It yeah. Is, so yeah, but I'm excited for the summer. Oh, a hundred percent. I'm so excited. And I also think um, to your last point, we really allowed each other without realizing allowed ourselves to be ourselves. One hundred percent on the field, off the field, whatever that. One hundred percent. Well, what a what a great this was so hour. Funny. We literally just talked for an hour. <laughs> yes. You know oh my god, I'm so excited. But Thank I you. had so much fun today. Me I too. well maybe we'll have Amanda back. We'll see. <laughs> a little a little pop up, a little period. Yeah, and or even like a, how we feel and after like playing like our um, bodies. Are Probably not gonna be thinking. I was us. saying to you on the field, I when I would do these co-ed leads, yeah. we would literally not practice. We would show up and become yeah. a team on the field. Yeah. And I was like, I always wanted to be that team that like practiced in February, and that is here now we are literally February. in February for a game in maybe June. Yeah, Couldn't we tell start up this summer and we're already practicing. But um, yeah, I might. I don't know. Catch us on the field. We'll, I'm excited. We'll, we'll, we'll give everyone updates. Thank maybe you, in a few months. Gab, for having me. Thank you, of Stitch course. Ballers. Yes. I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you for having Yay. me. That was so much fun. That's a